Hello and welcome to Comics Obscurity. I'm your host, Jack Talk Ty. And today, what we're talking about are some of the gadgets um, that are some of our favorite heroes. First one we're talking about is the Mother Box. The Mother Box um, as used by the gods of New Genesis. And this is um, a little item created by Jack Kirby. Now, Jack Kirby came up with the um, idea of the uh, smartphone way before we had any idea what it was, because that's what the mother box is. It's a smartphone that the gods would carry, and it's, it's somewhat alive. Um, they can do various things where they can open up portals, they can you know, transport across space. It's got godly power. It is a mother box. It is a technology beyond mankind. And it's been around for a while now. Lately, in the current DC Universe, the hero cyborg we see here, they've worked um, some of the stuff um, with Jack Kirby's New God saga and the cyborg's origin. So cyborg may be related to Mother Box technology on some level. Now, the next item here we're looking at, Captain America's shield, which we're all familiar with. It's an iconic item, one of the greatest uh, superhero gadgets known, and one of the most popular ones. Uh, when I was a kid, it was one of my favorite things, just that shield, just a, a cool thing for him to have. And uh, the thing is, the shield's indestructible, but, you know, indestructible to a degree. It takes a, quite a bit of power, but it can be destroyed. Uh, we're going to get to that in a minute, but one thing I do want to, a little small, minor thing. Captain America, you know, he throws that shield, and he throws it with such um, accuracy that the shield um, returns to his arm. It's like he throws it like a boomerang. It wasn't always that way. Uh, originally, he had to use magnets that I believe Tony Stark provided to him. He had magnets in his gauntlet that would draw the, uh, the shield back to him. And as I recall, they removed the magnets because he said it, it kind of threw off the shield's um, balance when he, when he threw it. Now, getting back to the destruction of it, it's been destroyed a couple times. The first time I remember, and as far as I know, this was the very first time we saw the shield actually destroyed. But destroyed was in Secret Wars, if I recall, it was issue 11, the original Secret Wars series. And I hope I'm not spoiling anything for people who have yet to read that great um, you know, maxi series from the 80s. But uh, basically, Doctor Doom killed all of the heroes. He just wiped them, he obliterated. He didn't kill them, he obliterated them. I mean, it was in their body, you could see the bodies laying there, everything, bodies in pieces, and Captain America's shield was uh, destroyed as a part of that. Now, I won't go into what happens, but at some point that shield was re was restored, as we know, but that was the first time I recall it being, re being destroyed. Um, Cap also, during the Infinity Gauntlet, um, again, the heroes were decimated. Um, Thanos had gotten a hold of the Infinity Gauntlet and had pretty much laid waste to the Marvel Universe, and I hope they do some of that in the movie. He murdered um, most of the people. He destroyed Manhattan. Um, he, just, he just went haywire. Captain America was one of the final heroes left standing, and he was man enough that he approached Thanos to, to bring him down, and Thanos just effortlessly destroyed that shield. The Age of Ultron, more recently, it was destroyed also. Um, now it was also snapped into pieces by uh, Odin's brother, whose name escapes me at the moment, but uh, our trusty videographer here, I'm sure, will have that name appear on the screen. And there it is right there. That's the name that you see on the screen there of Thor's brother, who destroyed the shield during the Fear Itself event. Odin and Thor had the shield reforged after it was destroyed during Fear Itself and it was reforged in Asgard by the, the same Asgardian elves who forged Thor's hammer. They repaired uh, Captain America's shield, and if you look at the shield closely, you can still see the cracks in it where it was shattered, but the shield, the shield has been reforged in Asgard. Now, next we move on to the Bat Computer, which is kind of overlooked by a lot of people, but the Bat Computer is a very popular thing, very major thing. It, it basically appeared first in the TV show, as far as I can recall. And uh, due to the popularity of the show in the 60s, it was branched over into the, um, to the books. Later on, it was upgraded. It can do a whole bunch of stuff. I remember reading over the years, it's got uh, some Kryptonian technology added to it, I believe. Technology from, uh, from Hawkman's world. Now, about that, I could be thinking more of the Justice League's uh, computer system as far as those items are concerned, the um, enhancements to it. But it's all linked to Batman's uh, Bat Computer. Um, the Bat Computer also controls Brother Eye, which is a satellite Batman created. Now, Brother Eye is fascinating. 
Batman at one point did not trust the heroes at all. And uh, he created the Brother Eye computer, which monitored the Earth. And the Brother Eye computer had uh, protocols that could take down every superhero. He had different ways. And this was all, you know, regulated from the Bat computer. Now, um, lately, or later, we know that Barbara Gordon became an oracle. Those of us who've been reading the books or, or know DC history to some degree. Oracle never really replaced the back computer, but she was more support. She's linked into the, uh, to the web, into the different layers of the web, and she's able to get uh, Batman the info he needs. She, she is Batman's link to, um, you know, just, she's the link. She's the living back computer, I guess you could say. Or she was. We all know what later became of Oracle with the onset of the new 52. But while she was around, she was a great character. And there was other villains have also their um, parallel. They have the calculator who does the same thing for the villains. Finally, here we look at Two-Face and his coin. Now, Two-Face is District Attorney Harvey Dent. He was an ally to Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne. He's very well liked. He's a good guy, popular, handsome guy. He was um, prosecuting a mobster, if I recall, his name was Sal Maroney, was the mobster's name. And um, he prosecuted the guy, got the guy thrown in jail. Sal Maroney um, threw acid on um, Harvey Dent's face. Harvey just had time to bring up a, a sheath of papers he had in his hand and cover half his face. And his, his mind snapped. He ended up taking uh, Sal Maroney's lucky coin. It, it was a comic where he actually turned on the penguin because he flipped the coin and the coin told him, no, I don't do this. And that's how insane he is. He relies on that coin. That coin is the key. Um, there, when Harvey Dent is sane, seeing the coin can trigger the, the two-faced personality to emerge. And it's just a great item. I love these little items that these characters carry that have history to them. This has been Comics Obscurity, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Before we go, I'm going to make a request of you guys in the comments, okay? Um, I want to know if I'm crazy, if any, if any of you remember this. Okay, thinking about Captain America's shield, I have a memory of reading a Captain America comic in which a villain used a cosmic cube and he was screwing Captain America up with it. He removed Captain America's skeleton from his body so that he was just a heap of flesh and he turned the shield into a crab. It was the same shield, but it now had crab legs and was walking around. Does anybody recall this story, or am I just insane? Somebody help me with that one in the comments below. Again, this is Jack Talk Ty. We thank you guys for viewing. Take care. We'll see you again soon.